I don't care that oil only accounts for 3% of the S&P, so don't tell me that. I care that oil's up 40% year to date, and it's having the best year ever. And I want to know from you how we can make some money, given we've already seen those kinds of gains. Okay, well, you can expect that the price of oil is going to continue to move higher. In October of 2018, it reached $76.90. It's going there this time this year. Uh, the overall allocation towards energy right now is either at an equal weight or you can make the argument that it's underweight. A lot of that is predicated upon ESG as an obstacle. That's right. But the fundamental story, Scott. A lot of the haters. The fundamental lot story. A lot of haters, Joe. You know lot that. A lot of haters. Absolutely. The uh, fundamental story from OPEC in the last two days was an overwhelmingly bullish one. They sounded like the Fed where they said they're not even thinking about thinking about normalizing production after they modestly increased from July uh, of 21 until April of 2022. So, Scott, if you're a refiner, you have to buy oil right now because you have no guidance on what production is ultimately going to be. And then lastly, look at the rig count. The 10-year average for the rig count sits at 1163. We're right now at 457. That's above 50 percent below where it needs to be to reach its 10-year average. All right. But yet the 10-year average for the price of oil is higher. So with all of that, where do you want to be? You want to be in the names that have been an acquirer very quietly over the last 18 months. There's been a series of deals. PXD bought Parsley for three and a half billion. I want to own PXD. That's a low beta ENP name. Personally, I own Suncor. I own LNG. But you could look at Chevron, which paid $13.5 billion for Noble Energy. You look at ExxonMobil, where the sentiment, again, is very negative. These are the places that you want to be. Devon Energy, Hess, EQT, ConocoPhillips. I could go on, but understand, this is an underweight sector, and the performance doesn't dictate being underweight. Be there. It's going to continue to move higher. Okay. Be there. Be square. That's what, that, that's what you're saying. Um, all right. Steve Weiss. All right. We're back to playing that kid's game. Steve Weiss listened to everything that you just said and said, whatever. Because if I would have bought, I know exactly <laughs> what he's thinking. If I would have bought energy five years ago, I would still be sitting in a bowl of tears with my tissues because these trades don't work. They've never worked. And then he would go to the numbers and he would say, Scott, in 2018, energy was the worst sector that year. It was down 20 and a half percent. Scott, in 2019, energy was up seven and a half percent. It was the worst sector that year. And in 2020, he would say, Scott, energy was down 37 percent. It was the worst sector that year. That's why I don't own these stocks. Right, Steve? That's right, Scott. And I understand you wanting to be me and tap into my to my thought process. Only for that moment. Correct. <laughs> Only for I that moment. Let's be clear. <laughs> Let's be clear. OK. <laughs> OK. But here's what I'd say. At any moment in time, energy is a good trade. It's been a good extended trade here. And yes, if you take a look at a chart, five years, 10 years, whatever, you still have 50 percent more in the stock just to get to the old highs. But I've seen a graveyard full of these noted energy players. We're even having strategists come on who've never followed energy, have no energy expertise, and hopping on board because they see it continuing to increase in price in the next five years. Yeah, they want to make some money. Happen. Yes, yes. They want to make some money. Right. Well, it's Why are you against making trade. money? I think it's. I'm not against making money. I just choose to make it elsewhere. I think that that energy still works because the momentum's still there. However. As an investor, you have to be disciplined, and you can't go to the latest hot trade every day. Otherwise, you drive yourself crazy, and you'll violate your discipline. So Joe's been dead right on this. He's made a lot of money, will continue to make money. I'm just finding better values elsewhere in the market that are more sustainable with partners I can be with for a long, long time rather than the Saudis and the others. As I said, look, Chevron, Exxon, sure, they can go higher. The fact that you've got a couple of activists, had a successful campaign, doesn't mean anything. They're still fossil fuel companies. And one of the well, biggest users of energy, which are autos, anything. are going to EVs.